Mark Almeida, Mark Almeida, reviews and yelling, reviews and yelling, Mark Almeida. Hola amigos and welcome to Mark Almania! This is Dro and in this episode we are going to be taking a look at last night's post-WrestleMania WWE Raw. So let's do this! Pro Wrestling! WWE Raw from April 8th, 2013. It's the post-WrestleMania Raw. I watched Raw last night, uh, the Raw after WrestleMania. It's usually one of the best and most eventful Raws of the year. And this year was no different. Uh, I'm not going to discuss the show in chronological order. I'm just going to hit up the stuff that really stood out to me. And so first off, let's discuss the crowd. Because they were the stars of the night, in my opinion. They were super loud, super into the show, and the reactions to everything were just awesome. From booing Cena out of the building, singing Fandango's theme, the hijinks during Orton, Sheamus, and on and on, the crowd was just something else and made this one of the most memorable Raws in a really long time. The crowd was fantastic and deserved top marks. Speaking of the crowd, I thought John Cena really worked within the reactions in the opening segment really well. He saw what he was up against and he made it work for him and I thought it was a good job. I didn't find his jabs at Mark Henry very funny, but I mean, Cena's humor is, you know, it's never a home run. It's always here and there, but the hill turn joke he did was good. I thought that was a good one. So he deserves props for that one. But uh, Cena comes out to the ring. He duels with the fans a bit, then says he's going to defend his newly won WWE championship tonight, which brings out Mark Henry, who says a great line about the bad thing when you go looking for trouble is that sometimes it finds you. Yeah. And then Cena makes some jabs, but then says he'll defend the title against Henry, which cues Booker T, who puts the kibosh on that. He says The Rock is the number one contender, but The Rock's injured. He says Mark can get a title shot if he can defeat Cena later tonight in a non-title match. It was a decent enough setup uh, for the match between Cena and Henry. And um, the matchup doesn't set my world on fire that much because Cena's defeated Mark Henry so many times in the past but uh personally I'm a big fan of Mark Henry so you know I mean I was into it I was wanting to see where it would go so later in the main event you know fans sing Mark Henry's theme (laughs) they boo uh, Cena out of the building they have a really short match that ends in a count out loss for Mark Henry which you know doesn't sit well with the world's strongest man you know and he attacks Cena post-match which gets like big pops from the crowd and then feed me more. Uh, Ryback stomps out to the ring, and he and Henry are, you know, exchanging blows. And then uh, Ryback knocks Henry down and hits a spine buster on him. You know, Henry, you know, it's like yowza. You know, Mark Henry uh, rolls out of the ring, and Ryback's getting the crowd to chant "Feed me more" and all this stuff over and over. And then he approaches Cena, and he's like trembling with rage. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then he offers to help C- uh, Cena up and. And the crowd's booing the heck out of that, like, oh, boo, boo. (laughs) And, you know, him and Cena nod, and then Cena's trying to celebrate. The crowd's booing, and then Ryback starts getting the crowd to do the feed me more, feed me more thing again. And Cena, you know, starts joining in, and then boosh, uh, (laughs) uh, Ryback attacks uh, Cena. Oh, my God. Holy moly, ravioli. And uh, the crowd's going nuts. Then he hits the shell shock on Cena. Yowza. He gives like the down Cena kind of an FU hand gesture and then he picks up the WWE title and he has the fans chanting, feed me more, feed me more. As the show goes off the air, it's like, yowza. Yeah, uh, I actually like them doing the tease of a Henry Cena f- a feud to swerve into a Ryback Hill turn and a Ryback Cena feud. I thought it worked uh, within the Henry Ryback feud that just finished at WrestleMania and it has like that full circle thing to it. If Ryback beats Henry on like the next Raw or something, it'll kind of smooth over all the wrinkles that could be in that thread and uh, pave the way for a really fun and a really new, a really fresh Ryback versus Cena feud. Uh, we'll see how they run with this going forward, but I felt the setup was all done pretty well. I thought it was a pretty good uh, heel turn uh, for Ryback. Uh, it was a pretty fun deal. Probably the other big story out of this Raw was about the World Heavyweight Championship. Alberto Del Rio, he faced uh, Jack Swagger and Zeb Coulter in a two-on-one handicap non-title match. 
one night after successfully defending the world title against Swagger at WrestleMania. Uh, I'm a big Alberto Del Rio fan, though um, I, I didn't think they did a great job with his face turn, and I didn't think they did a great job with the feud with Swagger, but still, I, I, I'm like, I've been into him the whole time he's been in the WWE, and I'm still like a big fan, so... I don't know what to tell you there. It's one of those old loyalty things. Um, the match was all right between this uh, handicap match. It wasn't terrible, but, you know, it wasn't great. Uh, Alberto wins. Of course, the match wasn't about being really a good match. It was more to set up what's coming after the match. Alberto wins with the cross arm breaker. And, you know, and then afterwards, you know, he can barely stand up and, when I saw him barely able to stand and all the medics and stuff attending to him, I'm like, oh, they're going to do it. And then, holy moly, ravioli, Dolph Ziggler's music hits, and he cashes in the money in the bank briefcase. Oh, my God. The crowd is losing their minds. Dolph, like, goes after Alberto's injured ankle and leg, and he hits a fame master. Uh, but Del Rio kicks out. Holy moly. And then Alberto starts fighting back. I was losing it. I was losing it like on two fronts. One, Alberto might actually defend the title. Yes, Viva Del Rio. And then number two, is Ziggler not going to win it? They're going to cut him off at the knees that badly? Really? I'm like, oh my God. Um, after the end of Gary, I was really doubtful that Ziggler was really going to pull it off. And then the cross arm breaker. Oh, yowza, palza. Oh my God. But then Dolph escapes by attacking the ankle. Whoa, that was a super cool spot there. And then zigzag. One, two, three. Dolph Ziggler wins the world title. Holy moly, ravioli explode into space. Mine explosions. Yowza, the crowd loses it. I was losing it. You know, I was like mixed on this, you know, because um, like emotion wise, because on the one hand, I'm a big Del Rio fan. And I was really sad to see him lose the title. But on the other hand, it was like such a huge moment. When Ziggler finally broke through and cashed in and won the belt, it was like a big moment. And one of the best cash-ins I think they've had with the Money in the Bank gimmick. Um, I think this was the right crowd to do this at for certain. I believe any crowd would have popped, but uh, possibly no crowd. But this one would go as nuts as they did for this. So top marks for Ziggler for finally breaking through and getting to the belt. And big hopes that Alberto de Rio gets another run with the big gold belt in the future. Uh, we have to discuss the deal with Randy Orton and Sheamus. Sheamus earlier asked Vicky for a match against the Big Show. They tell him yes, but he'll owe them one. Something like that. Then Randy Orton asked Booker T for a match against Big Show to make up for, you know, con convincing them to let Big Show join the team against the Shield. And so Booker T gives it to him. Then Seamus and Orton, you know, meet backstage. They have a powwow about it. And uh, then uh, Seamus uh, heads to the ring. He asks the crowd if they want to see him kick the Big Show's arse. This brings out Orton, who walks out to the ring, starts the first line of a promo, stops, walks around, and then he asks Seamus what his line is. <laughs> Seamus gives Orton this look like, are you serious? Then feeds him the next line, and then Orton continues with the promo. Oh, what was that? I don't think I've ever seen that before. And then there is this deal where before the commercial break, Michael Cole says, the WWE Universe will decide who faces the big show tonight via a Twitter poll. And then we come back from commercial. We get the results of that poll, which says 77% for Orton, 23% for Sheamus. So Orton will face the big show, right? Well... Vicky Guerrero and Booker T come out. Uh, they announce the fairest way to decide who will fight Big Show is for both Orton and Sheamus to fight each other. Wait, what? What was all that about the fans deciding through Twitter? Do they expect people to have that short an attention span they won't remember what happened before the commercial break? Uh, anyways, so Orton and Sheamus fight. I don't think the match was that bad, but the fans didn't seem to be that into the match. Uh... And so the fans then steal the show. We get, you know, a plethora of chants, waves, ole, 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 ole. Chants for JBL, Jerry Lawler, even Michael Cole. The crowd was the spectacle of this match. Uh, anyways, we get uh, no clear decision in this match because Big Show walks out. Rams Sheamus into the ring post, KOs Orton, then kills Orton several times outside the ring. And then Randy Orton sells it by kind of sitting up and making faces. I guess this is building to a show Seamus Orton three-way feud of some sort. 
not sure how money all that is, but uh, it's something for them to do, which is always good. So, uh, Some other things of note from Raw. The Miz and Wade Barrett had a really good match, in my opinion, for the Intercontinental title. Miz won the title on the WrestleMania pre-show in a short match, and then he turned around and lost it here one night later in a really good match. Bad for Miz, uh, who the fans seem to hate almost as much as John Cena, but the match was really good, and Wade's finisher, that elbow smash, looked like a million bucks in the finish. So, really good match. Worth searching out, in my opinion. Then, uh, Fandang Fandango wrestled Kofi Kingston briefly before Jericho ran in and gave him a king-sized beatdown. Yowza! Jericho beat the heck out of Fandango. The post-beatdown thing with Fandango, like, he's all in pain, and he gets on the microphone, and he corrects the ring announcer on his name. I thought that was pretty funny. And then the fans... They sing his his theme song. Dun 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 dun. That was pretty kick ass. Uh, again, the crowd were the stars tonight, and I guess there are legs for a bit more of the Fandango Jericho feud. And I think the feud has helped turn Fandango from an annoying gimmick to kind of an entertaining heel gimmick. So I'm curious to see where it goes. And that's what stood out to me from Raw last night. It was an eventful post-WrestleMania Raw and was really entertaining. Um, I'm looking forward to SmackDown on Friday and seeing where everything goes. Uh, Thanks for listening. Next time I'll be looking at the UEFA Champions League quarterfinal second leg matches. So tune in for that. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and to follow me on Twitter at Texan Spaniard. And check out our Tumblr page, um, markoutmania.tumblr.com. Uh, Thanks for listening and adios.